Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So in today's video we are going to be busting some myths <laughs> about buying property at home. And I have no better person to be a myth buster with me than Trish Chanda. Well I've heard a lot. <laughs> Hi Trish, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm good, thank you. I'm actually really glad we're having these conversations because some of the things people are telling me really does put you off by a man. Yeah, you see, we're going to get into all of that. <laughs> if you guys don't know Trish, she is a YouTuber and a content creator. So go and follow her YouTube channel and uh, follow her on Instagram as well. Okay, but before we get into all of that, if we haven't met, my name is Natasha. I'm the founder of Diaspora Connect, where our sole objective is to help you buy property um, in a safe and reliable way. And on this channel, I like to give you information and inspiration on the Zambian property market. Okay, if you like the sound of that, then please subscribe to this channel and give it a like and share it with other people in your community. Okay, so Trish, let's get into it. Tell me some of the crazy things you hear about buying property at home. Uh, well, a lot of people like they're saying like, oh, if you're buying properties and you're British and you want to buy properties in Zambia, it's really difficult because the, the prices are really high. Well, they always like make it really expensive for us. So if, let's just say something is fifty thousand kwacha, they'll be saying, no, it's hundred hundred thousand kwacha to us. They like double every price. <laughs> I've heard, that. I've heard that from a lot of my diaspora clients. Yeah. But what I want to say is that you want to make sure that you're dealing with the right people. Okay. Yes, so that the price is the price and the price isn't changing because of where you live. Yeah. Yeah, so when you're dealing with some shady characters, yeah, that's what they do. But oh, if really? you're dealing with licensed and registered professionals, yes. then they're going to give you a good deal. Okay then, oh, well, I guess that's the right way to do it. Another thing that people always say as well is that, you know, like when you're working with contractors, that people say they use the cheapest material even if you're paying for the most expensive they just like mix it mm, well i don't know i think that it depends on the type of contractor that you're using okay. because you know that contractors all over the world can be a headache i'm sure it's the same in the uk okay. so you want to make sure that you get a lot of uh, references before you decide on the contractor okay. that you're going to use so you ask people and you you say you know have you built before were you happy with it who did you use yeah. who would you recommend and also if you have an architect which you should before you start building they will be able to use a very good contractor that they've worked with on other projects all right cool just a little question i have for myself let's just say I'm, this, this is not me i'm asking for a friend <laughs> asking for a friend okay not for me for a friend let's just say you want to buy land in zambia and you're using your british passport to buy land now how do you do that? Do you, do you get a permit or how do you do it that way around as a foreigner? Okay, so as a non-Zambian, yes. as we like to call them. If you're non-Zambian, then I actually did a whole video on how you can buy land. Okay. But the quickest way would be to incorporate a company where you would have to be a minority shareholder. Okay. But, and I know that doesn't sound good, right? What's the minority though? How, what's the percentage? Well, you'd have to be like, you can't go beyond 24%. Yeah, twenty four percent. It doesn't. But sound can they good. take the property off you? If you, you so okay, hold on. So I own twenty four percent of the property. Who owns the rest of the percentage? Oh, well. Who does it belong to? <laughs> okay, so we have I'm a corporate sorry. services um, firm. Yeah. And we do company incorporations for our clients, but we also have. So you guys. own the rest of it. The company owns the rest of it. But oh wow! Yes, but but can you take it off me? And it's oh, of course not. No, we have safeguards so that it's your property and you nobody can take it away from you without your knowledge and consent. And we've done this actually for a number of non Zambian clients. Okay. All right, but what I always tell people, guys, just come home and get your NRC. Just come home and do it. It's the fastest and the quickest way to own yeah. property in your own name, in your own right. So is your NRC more powerful than your passport? Yes, it is. Because your NRC is proof of your Zambian citizenship. Not everybody has a passport. But everybody who is above the age of 16 should have an NRC. Ah, oh, okay. I, I, never, I never knew that. I always had it in my head, like, you always think that the passport's got more power than the NRC. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Okay, so when it comes to buying property over here, right? Like, obviously, you have Livingston, you've got Indola, you've got Lusaka. If I want to invest, what's the place, best place to go to first? 
I think Lusaka. Okay, okay. I'm Lusaka based, um, but it's a capital city. It's got a lot of opportunities. Um, it's the city with the highest population, so that means demand is strong. So I think Lusaka is the best place. Okay, but am I going to get my money back? Let's just say for some reason I buy free bedroom apartment and I want to rent it out. Am I going to make my money back? Let's just say I spent how much on the property? Thirty thousand dollars. Of course. What's my return? Well, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Depending on the area, I know. No, it depends on the area, it depends on the, the house. <laughs> Whether or not you make a return is going to depend on a lot of factors. Um, it's going to depend on how much you're going to rent out that property for. I actually did a whole video on how you can increase your revenue. Okay. Uh, from your rental property and one of those is short stay um, so rather than looking at long-term um, rentals yes uh, long-term tenant then you do short stay yes um, but also the other thing that uh, I want to mention and people usually forget this when they're talking about property yeah. is the capital gains the capital gains of the property the value oh, of the property that. goes up explain that yeah so some people complain that no the rentals are low and yeah okay the rentals can be low um, but it's the appreciation of the value of that property that is going oh. to continue rising. Okay. And that is due to a number of factors. And the other thing is that when you're investing in property, you have to have a strategy, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to build um, like an apartment for $50,000 if you're in a high density area, right? Yeah. So you have to think about what you want to invest and what you want to get out of it. That should inform how much you're going to spend in it. Okay, okay. Yes. Makes you have sense. to take property like a business if you want to see this as an investment. And I guess it's a different and also choosing the right area because yeah. I think the other problems um, that other people have as well is like I face it all the time. So like I told you, if I buy something, like even a tomato, <laughs> two quatches, no, five quatches, <laughs> they're always like putting the prices up. So it kind of like, if someone is investing from the diaspora, where is the best place to invest where they're going to feel comfortable? and be around uh, other like-minded people? Well, I think the best places now are, we're looking at the outskirts, um, those growing areas in Osaka. Okay. You know, because there's been so much work done in terms of roads and infrastructure, yes. so the city is just spreading out. Yeah. And so you want to look at those areas that are up and coming. So you want to look at areas like Osaka East, um, and that's uh, like Silver West, um, Guerrero. You want to look at areas like McKinney, which is um, a great area. You basically want to look at areas which were former farm areas, which are now turning into residential. That's where you're going to see, I think, the biggest bang for your buck. Okay then, and getting back, we've already spoke about it. So just to clarify, if I have my NRC number, um, do I own my food property? Yes, okay. you can put it in your individual names, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's the route I'm going with. <laughs> okay guys, so I hope that you watched this video and we busted a few of those myths that you might have about <laughs> buying property at home if you are not Zambian, if you have a non-Zambian passport. Yes. We went into all of that. If you liked it, then give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of my informative videos about the Zambian real estate market. And don't forget to share with other Zambians in your community. Now, if you want more information, we have tons of free resources on our website and we're going to put a link to those free resources in the description below the video. But otherwise, bye for now.